had no pants on. The story you're about to hear is true. Only the name has been changed. LJ and I obviously broke up within this past week. We broke up. Okay, baby, come on. White one needs to go in the hole. Good job. Do you want chocolate chips in your pancakes? Yeah, chocolate chips in my pancakes. Okay. I'm not being in my Okay. Good job, high five. Good morning. It's a few days after Christmas. I am making pancakes because I don't work today. I definitely didn't intend on starting out 2024 in such a drastically different way. Obviously you saw my ex-boyfriend in the last clips of last week's vlog. I feel like there's a more appropriate time to get into that when my son is with his dad. I think that would be a better idea. We're gonna go to the movies today, right? I go to the movies Oh, I think we're gonna go see one about birds. That's right, you, your pancakes have chocolate chips? Yeah, my chocolate chips are yummy. They're yummy, you like yeah. chocolate. You like your chocolate, right? They're good chocolate. I know, mommy likes her chocolate too. I eat my egg. You don't like eggs. When did you eat an egg? I'm not eating the egg. That's what I thought. Mommy does like eggs. But I think mommy's gonna make a protein shake for breakfast this morning. Mom, I like chocolate. I know, me too. Yeah. Chocolate's delicious. Who doesn't like chocolate? <laughs> Good morning. I feel like that lighting is harsh, but can you say good morning? Yeah, good morning. What are we gonna do today? Do you wanna go over the itinerary? Yeah. Okay, so on the agenda this morning, we just made breakfast. Mommy is having a shake. If you guys wanna go check out what I eat in a week, I eat pretty clean, pretty healthy. So I am deciding every single vlog, I'm having one or maybe Mama. even several recipes attached below. So go ahead and get Mama. the link in my description. Mama. It'll take you to a Google doc. It's like free for right now for anybody who has the link. So I encourage you to go because I am like a little bit over Mama. 60 pounds Mama. down Mama. since my pregnancy. Mama. So if you're looking to lose weight in a healthy and sustainable way, Mama. Mama. take a look at my recipes. Mama. Can you be nice? We're gonna go get an oil change and then we're gonna run a few errands. We need to go to the grocery store. Mommy has to work, so I have a five hour shift at my salon today. Mommy. So mommy has to work. So grandpa's gonna come get you and you're gonna go up to Ama and grandpa's. Mommy's gonna go to work and then mommy's gonna work tonight too. And then come after I go Ama grandpa. Yeah, then we'll do gymnastics and swimming tomorrow morning. Mommy will meet you there. And then this weekend, it's just you and me, baby. It's just I go swimming with yeah, dad. yeah, you go see your dad this weekend. Bye, boy, bye. <laughs> my dad that goes swimming and we don't do to the water. Yeah. Yes. If there's one thing that's real, it is how gorgeous Colorado Blue Sky is. Like, that's yeah. unreal. If there's one thing that's real, like, that's yeah. unreal.
I intended on vlogging a lot more today, but story time, the Walmart and Highlands Ranch, their auto center, wouldn't recommend, but then Loki would recommend because it was fucking awful service. But then the manager gave me the oil change for free because I had a screaming toddler. They made me wait over an hour and a half. Um, I was late for work. Oh, mm-hmm. I decided to order some Qdoba. Like a bowl of cheese. And the whole Walmart fiasco, I had gotten groceries, which I'm doing a grocery haul, stay tuned. And I got a sandwich for work. But then I realized it had just been in my bag since 11 a.m. And it's like 7 p.m. right now. And I was like, oh, that's called food poisoning because it's like a salami sandwich. So couldn't eat that. So I had to order this. I got an Apple Watch, which is also a lie. I've really been working on my mindfulness and making gratitude lists through this time. Because obviously it hasn't been the easiest of times. Breaking up with somebody I was insanely in love with but i have a diet coke so it's fine time to do a little grocery haul i went to nespresso and walmart yesterday so trigger warning calories will be discussed let's start out with the coffee because i need coffee right now golden caramel they recently rebranded their flavors this probably was called something cooler before, like the vanilla one that I got, which is this next one I'm gonna show you. It's just called Sweet Vanilla. It used to be called Vanilla Custard Pie, like way more appealing in my opinion, but someone was clearly upset. So these are only like 10 calories each. So, I mean, everyone kind of knows black coffee is black coffee. Finally, I got their Voltesso Espresso shots. This is just a single shot, not a double. I've been really into chai lately, but the caffeine in that is not doing it for me. So we're gonna make some dirty chais with this. And then the lady, of course, gave me a little sample pack. I think, so these are all ones that go good with milk. I got one of these the last time. This is like the Bianco line, the Bianco line. Starting out with all the frozen foods. Obviously, as you can tell, I'm a really busy working mom. So I know fresh cut vegetables might be like a sore topic of discussion, but I got some frozen veggies just because these are so easy to just throw on an egg scramble on the stove really quick. So I got some sliced mushrooms and then some pre-sliced pepper and onion blend. So it has yellow onions, bell peppers, um, both green and red, I think. Also, maybe this is an unpopular opinion. I don't think any bell pepper of any different color tastes different from the other. Sue me. The next frozen item I got were these fruit pearls. They're 60 calories per cup and it's literally pieces of frozen fruit. So in this case, it's strawberry. I got the strawberry and cream flavor. And then it has little pearls of like fruit juice frozen. Some people aren't into like sugars. I'm all about natural sugars and you know what, if it keeps you from binge eating an entire thing of Krispy Kreme donuts, why the hell not? This is a great little breakfast. I brought it as a snack yesterday to work, so I already had one, and I can tell you 10 out of 10 recommend. Staying on that natural sugar vibe, I got some bananas. I try to only get three or four at a time because I don't love bananas, I just blend them up. I got some fresh strawberries, Storm loves these. Typically, I chop these, put them in a glass mason jar, and they seem to last longer than just leaving them in their plastic container. And I got some blueberries as well. Even my whole family, they just call Storm like the berry boy because he's obsessed with fresh fruit. And honestly, he gets that from me. Berries and cream. I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream. Here are two of the pre-made items I got. This was a little naked juice that I got for Storm. And then this is a little barbecue chicken wrap. Got one dozen of organic eggs. You can kind of see a trend here. I think I seem to get like breakfasty foods, but I try to incorporate it in different ways in my diet. These are awesome. I mean, eggs are like 70 calories per egg. I usually use two. I either cook them over easy or in this case, this week, I think I'm gonna do a scramble since I did get those frozen veggies. That with maybe a little bit of cheese on top is like a 210 calorie breakfast, 250, you know? You can do it however you want. You can even add some sliced avocado on the side. Mwah. I'm gonna have to go to the store tomorrow to get some more fresh produce. I try to get my staples once a week and then go in to supplement with the produce and milk maybe like two, three times a week. This is what I'm gonna be making myself for dinner tonight. This is some salmon, it's Atlantic salmon. I think that it has pesto butter on it. 
The rest is kind of just some small snacks for Storm. I have a toddler. A lot of the time, all he's eating are like my frozen chicken nuggets that I get for him um, and snack foods. And honestly, I'll take it because toddlers are picky and all I want from him is to just eat. You know, I don't really care. So I bought him these cheese sticks. He loves Paw Patrol. Before his Spidey kick that he's on now, he was all about Paw Patrol. And then, of course, a breakfast staple for children and me, honestly, just some instant oatmeal packs. So I like to do some fancy overnight oats. I will have some recipes about that coming up. Quick reminder, make sure to always look it down below. I'm gonna have a link of at least one to several recipes per weekly vlog. So it's free right now. Anyone who has the link to the document can go and view it. I highly encourage you because as I tried to say earlier in the vlog, but I was rudely interrupted by my adorable two-year-old, I am nearly, I think a little bit over 60 pounds down from my pregnancy, and I'm still on this weight loss journey. I'm not exactly where I wanna be, but I'm kind of at the point where like fitness journey, it, there's not a destination. You don't just like arrive. Like I'm okay with where I'm at because I know I'm busy. I know that, you know, the last few weeks due to the holidays, I haven't gotten to the gym five days a week like I was doing earlier in the fall and that's okay. But you know, I try to fill my house with these healthier, like sustainable foods because if we have stuff like cereals, chips, I will binge eat all of them. They cannot be in my house. Since I was saying I do like to do overnight oats recipes, you can still use these oats. And honestly, they're already pre-sweetened. So in a way, like you don't have to use a teaspoon of honey or a teaspoon of maple syrup. They're already sweetened. So if you do like the overnight oat vibe, you can add these to your little mason jar or container, add some fruit, add your milk, and then boom, in the morning, it's already ready to eat. I mean, especially if you're a texture person, um, I know some people use old fashioned oats for overnight oats. These are instant, so they would be softer, but like, I just tried to kill two birds with one stone. I know Storm likes the pre-sweetened ones and I know I can still get away with eating the pre-sweetened ones and be in my caloric deficit and still enjoy my food. Like these are 130 calories per packet. Um, the maple ones, which are my favorite are 160. You know, add a scoop of protein powder to that. That's 120. So, I mean, you are looking at like 280 calories of like good food and you're already getting in like over 25 grams of protein in just one breakfast. You can add a nut butter to that. Like, you know what? I'm just so passionate about it. Don't even get me into it. Anyway, that's the grocery haul. Let's get our day started. I'm looking at going thrifting today. It's a Saturday. So ARCs always have 50% off deals. I'm hoping to find some furniture steals. And also I can't even make my egg scramble at this time because all the pots and pans that I did have were owned by my ex-boyfriend and I dropped them off at his house last night. So I need to go get some new pot and pan sets. All right, let's get our day started, bitch. Oh, ew, okay. Mini thrift haul, I spent $16, let's go. We have a pot, and I'm slowly trying to make my fridge aesthetically pleasing, so a little carafe, cute, cute. A lamp, love it, gotta have it. Finally, these two toddler chairs, I'm still in search of a good toddler table, but as you can see, that little division area between my kitchen and my living room is perfect for a little toddler dining and arts and crafts area. I'm planning on next weekend sanding and painting these two little chairs sage green. And I think that it'll really pull this apartment together. I don't know if I should go to the gym right now or if I should rest right now because I do have to be up at six or like 5.45 tomorrow morning to go to work. <sighs> I feel like I need to rest because I'm still on antibiotics for my never ending sinus infection. But that was my thrift haul. Thrift haul! <sighs> we made it. Yes, I'm putting on my comfort hoodie that I wash regularly, by the way, but this is what I wear at home all the time. Taking my pants off, we're getting comfortable. And it is New Year's Eve, so we are writing down our resolutions, and I'm gonna do a brief year end review, talk about what I learned this year, what I'm gonna be doing going into 2024, and I'm gonna be so real, so transparent, talk about my fuck ups, talk about the imperfections. Talk about how we're all human and let's get into it. Also, I'm an Apple girly right now. Not only do I have an Apple watch, I just invested in some generation two AirPod Pros. Let's get 
notes, please take a break to appreciate the inspiration behind my AirPod purchase, Luke Russell Barton. He wanted a shout out desperately. He threatened to not watch my vlogs unless I shouted him out. So shout out. And I have my iPad here. And this is what we are going to use to start planning out our year. Brief rundown. I've been thinking a lot about my friendships and relationships and how being a 23 year old mom and being divorced and living with resentment towards my son's dad, towards members of my family. And it, it really is only negatively impacting who I am. It's having no strong impact on the people who I'm angry with. I'm gonna be leaving that type of behavior, that type of negative talk and negative self-talk in 2023. LJ and I obviously broke up within this past week. That relationship taught me more than I feel like I could teach myself. I mean, really, it mostly boils down to I shouldn't be with somebody who I feel like I have to try to constantly change. And he deserves to be with someone who doesn't want to constantly be changing him. And I'm still so young. I'm sure when I'm 30, I'm going to look back at this and think of all the other lessons that are probably in plain sight that I can't even see yet but I've really just learned and seen now over the past, like since 2019, how seasonal life is. There are seasons for friendships. There are seasons for relationships. I truly believe deep down in my heart that my most recent ex is my person. But that being said, I think he was my person for this time in my life. I mean, it was a very, very transformative stage. He was with me through my son's first birthday and my son's gonna be three already in the spring. I mean, he was seeing the divorce unfold. He was so open and willing to still try with me, despite me being a young single mom, despite me being a young divorcee, despite me being very close in a co-parenting relationship with my son's dad that I'm sure caused uncomfortable feelings. He was so open and so willing to still give it a shot. And in those ways, he was really selfless. And I feel like that taught me a lot. And you know, there are qualities I see in him that I want to possess those qualities for myself and how I interact in my interpersonal relationships. And I admire him for those things. And what I'm starting to understand in life is like, especially in breakups or in friendships, there are such valuable things that people can teach you. It doesn't mean that they're meant to be with you until the day that you die. And that is really a scary thought and a hard thought um, because I really thought I wanted that with this specific person. And um, we had had some issues a while back and Maybe there's more I could have done. Maybe I could have stayed more patient. Maybe I could have been more like him and more open and willing, but I find myself constantly feeling frustrated, constantly feeling disappointed, not necessarily feeling like I can say exactly what I'm feeling because not only in that relationship, but in other aspects of my life, sometimes I feel like my feelings, my thoughts, my actions and behaviors are secondary to everyone else's because I'm very much a caretaker. I'm very much a mother. I'm very much maternal. And I've learned through these experiences that it's not my responsibility to be that for anyone besides my child and for myself. I need to put myself first in 2024. Moving forward without him in my life is, there's a part of it that's just so devastating because I really thought this could be it. And I mean, even with my ex-husband, I never thought that. And I've had that conversation with my son's dad, my ex-husband as well. And that was really hurtful for him to hear me say. And I, being the one who breaks up with everybody I've been with, I think 
that means something too. And I think that I need to do some soul searching, wonder and look into why I tend to do that. I mean, I need to start seeing if the decisions I make are too premature and I'm, I need to start doing more self-reflection. And I think just as much as there are reasons I broke up with him because of the way he is, I broke up with him because of patterns I'm recognizing in myself too. So I'm not going to get into insane details about our relationship because I love him. Seriously wish him nothing but the best. I just feel like he deserves amazing things in life. He's had a really hard time recently and he deserves those good things and so do I. I shouldn't have to wait for the things that I've now for years been working really hard towards. So let's talk about 2024. If you are still watching, I love you. I am not gonna have too strict of a rubric going into this. I'm just gonna title the top of the page, 2024. You don't have to call it goals. You don't have to call it resolutions. I have been reading a lot about manifestation and I truly, truly believe that works. So I am going to be writing in detail the person I want to be, the person I am, the person I'm going to be, as well as the people specifically, specific details and characteristics about the people who I want to surround myself with. A huge thing that I've been thinking, just to circle back around to that resentment that I brought up in the very beginning of this long-winded rant, when I feel that way and I feel angry and I'm like, I wasted my time, why do I keep people in my life who do X, Y, and Z? Because you're allowing it. You are allowing it. That's, they, people are doing things like that because you're letting it happen. I am going to set some extremely high standards for what I allow in my life. Now, I'm not saying the things I allow are inherently toxic, but if they're not serving me, I can't do that anymore. I'm gonna be 24. I need to be very direct, know what I'm looking for, know what I'm doing, going into these next steps in my life. I mean, like, I, I can just feel that I'm gonna have a lot of very defining moments in this coming year and I need to be prepared for that because with growth comes discomfort. I don't think I'm gonna share too deeply what I'm gonna write because it's gonna be deeply personal, very descriptive. I also heard of this technique that I'm gonna be doing where we plan quarterly. That way we are less likely to procrastinate and also there's ink all over my fucking finger. That's so annoying. What is wrong with this pen? My son's dad gave me this and it's like, getting all over me. That's annoying, what the fuck? Okay. Anyway, plan quarterly. That way we're less likely to procrastinate. So rather than having 365 days to fulfill something, we have three months. I'm gonna have personal goals, work goals, um, kind of section them out into the four seasons and you know by the end of like each 90 day period the things I write within those boxes have to be accomplished and I'm going to hold myself to that as I said I'm not going to share too much but I'm going to journal now about kind of the things I went over what I've learned about myself what I want to dive more deeply into I want to really really focus heavily on motherhood this year my son is only this young once he's growing up so fast i'm gonna want to try to be more present in life i want to try to be more mindful of my feelings i want to try to put myself first and i want to just surround myself with like-minded people i cannot be with people who are demotivated i can't spend my time around people who don't have motivation and drive doesn't mean that I don't respect those people. It doesn't mean that they're on their own journey, but it's not my journey. And this year is my year. I'm focusing on me. I'm focusing on my family. And I'm going to just reflect on, as I said, what I spoke to you guys about, what I want for myself. And I'm just gonna write it all out. I mean, this isn't a very big book. And honestly, I think that this is gonna be mostly filled. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's vlog. I. I'm really excited to see what 2024 brings. I'm spending it New Year's Eve alone and honestly, I feel good about it. I mean, I just worked a 12 hour day today. I have my son bright and early tomorrow morning. 
Um, it's the last day of the school closure due to the holidays. So we are gonna do some arts and crafts and just spend time together. And like, those are really the moments that count. And I'm really excited to be creating again. And I hope that this continues and I hope that you guys watch it and enjoy and wanna share. And I'm just really looking forward to the growth. And even if nobody's watching this, this is so exciting for me because in two months, six months, two years, I can look back on this and be like, holy shit. The growth is insane. Goodbye 2023, happy new year, and let's all welcome 2024 with open arms, positive vibes, and it's going to be amazing. Oh, I have no pants on. Happy new year. I guess you guys will be my new year's kiss. Should I do the face that men make when they go in? Look. See?